A lot of people have asked me what it was like to wake up to the images that were coming out of Syria with the victims of the, the sarin gas attack. Witnesses and some activists said the toxic substance was delivered by Syrian and Russian jets in an attack in the rebel-held region. Obviously it was painful, it was infuriating, it was frustrating, but at the same time there have been so many mornings like that in the last six years. It is an interesting sort of, you know, question as to why we object to the methods of slaughter, but not the overall slaughter uh, that's that's been faced. The Syrian people have been facing over the last six years. Syrians have been dying by bullet, by mortar, by barrel bomb, and they've been killed both by the regime and armed opposition to the regime. So I think a lot of people paid attention recently because there's something horrific about death by air, death by breathing in chemicals. There's something that's sort of tantalizing about the horrificness of, of evil. And, and you know, it's a way that sort of you can see it in a more, more blatant way. I think we've become a little desensitized to the, to the other kinds of death. And the problem is after so many years of dehumanizing Arabs and Muslims and now Syrians in sort of the global imagination. Do you think Islam is at war with the West? I think Islam hates us. That kind of dehumanization has led people to sort of tune out and, and to think that what's happening there is sort of inevitable. This is a question of culture, a question of religion. I think part of the reason we're willing to let Syria go or let these sorts of things happen is because we've become accustomed to really simplistic narratives about Arabs and Muslims. They will never have refugees or refugees in their backyards. Exactly. They just will not. This is part of the problem is that we have no idea who Syrians are and we've had no idea what Syria is, even though it's this place of great culture and great civilization and great humanity. Even if it's consuming our headlines, yeah, it's probably at that point risen to the level where we should take the time to learn something. I think the American public ha in many ways has, a, has its own problems, but it has to realize that we are implicated in what's going on in Syria. In the last six years, it has been unfortunately only mostly Syrians mourning the loss of Syria, but this is something that the whole global community should feel the loss of because it's our, it's our loss collectively. The places might not completely disappear, but the people who make those places are going to have disappeared. It would be a tragedy if we only found out about it too late and once, once we couldn't do anything about it.